message. A message that is loud and clear and does not mince words. We have come to take our country back. We've come to take our country back from the special interests that use Washington as their personal piggy bank. The special interests that are more concerned with their personal welfare than the general welfare. The Washington machine that gobbles up our freedoms and invades every nook and cranny of our lives must be stopped. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Rand Paul running for president of the United States. Uh, I, now, I didn't, I didn't hear the whole speech, to be fair, so I don't know if he followed that with this, but this is what he should have said when he said it. It's a great line, and it's a very appropriate line. When he says, we've, we've come to take our country back, what he should have said was, we've come to take our country back from the people who have tried their best to change it, irrep to, to do harm to it, not on purpose, maybe, but to change the fundamentals of, of America that we've all known and loved. The freedoms that we had, had, that we grew up with, the country that we all knew and loved is gone. It's gone on almost every level. Don't tell me about lobbyists and special interests. That's, that's political garbage. That doesn't resonate. I'm sorry. That doesn't resonate with the average voter. Oh, I'm going to go take our country back from lobbyists and special interests. No. From the radical left in the White House and the radical left in the Senate on which I serve. And under Harry Reid, what I saw was disgraceful. It was un-American. And we're going to take our country back from the radical White House and the radical Senate and the radical left. That's what you need to say to resonate. Not the lobbyists and the special interests, blah, 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 blah. Come on. I'm just giving you free advice, Senator. I'm giving you free advice. Here's one more. I have a vision for America. I want to be part of a return to prosperity, a true economic boom that lifts all Americans, a return to a government restrained by the Constitution. A return to privacy, opportunity, liberty. Too often, when Republicans have won, we've squandered our victory by becoming part of the Washington machine. That's not who I am. All right, you're running for president, so you're implying that who? That George W. Bush and George H. W. Bush and Ronald Reagan uh, have become, when they won, they became part of the, uh, the, the, the machine? Is that, I mean, he, if he's talking about Boehner and McConnell, then say it. Say we had a landslide election in November, and our leadership has failed us. If you want to spend your time trashing Republicans, which apparently is what some of what he did. I could have written him a better speech. I absolutely could have. Now, President Obama doesn't need anybody to write his speeches. He has a very constant theme these days. You remember the National Prayer Breakfast a couple of months ago? Remember this oldie but goodie? Lest we get on our high horse and think this is unique to some other place. Remember that during the Crusades and the Inquisition, people committed terrible deeds in the name of Christ. In our home country, slavery and Jim Crow all too often was justified in the name of Christ. All right. So today, days after 175 students were slaughtered in Kenya for being Christians, selected for being Christians, selected to be shot to death in cold blood. He goes to the Easter prayer breakfast, and this is what he says. On Easter, I do reflect on the fact that as a Christian, I am supposed to love. And I have to say that sometimes when I listen to uh, less than loving expressions by Christians, I get concerned. But that's a topic for another day. I, 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 you know what? He said nothing at the Easter prayer breakfast. Nothing! 
about those students who were killed, about the Christians being slaughtered all over the world. Instead, he bashed Christians because it's who he is, it's what's in his heart, it's what's in his head, it's how he was raised, it's what he believes. Don't think this is coincidental. Don't think he does it. He's getting bad advice. Someone wrote him something. This is who he is. The death of Christians and the deaths of Jews do not move him. Period. Alan West is next.